Hello guys, Matt Lemke here with your Gamer Goggles and today we have a flip through on Outbreak Undead. Be right back. Alright, so Outbreak Undead is uh, not your stereotypical role playing game. It is a uh, apocalypse style role playing game, uh, zombie apocalypse to be specific. And the book is really nice. Okay, so let's start with the cover. The cover is a nice embossed uh, cover. It's not a soft, like, velvety feel. It's just, an, it's, it's just a, I don't know what the right word is. It is embossed. It's got like a dull finish to it. I love the coat and the art. I like the uh, little halo projection of light around Outbreak Undead in the middle. Um, and then the book in itself is <clears throat> pretty much, excuse me, pretty much laid out like a journal, like somebody's been writing it and this is the way uh, things have gone since the fall of humanity and the rise of the zombies, or however you wish to look at it. Uh, Outbreak Undead is uh, not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it an apocalyptic game at all. I would call it a survival game uh, because your goal is to live as long as you can live. It's uh, down the same kind of lines of Cthulhu. Your goal is not to go insane, but almost everybody does. In Outbreak Undead, uh, I played first edition. This is the second edition book. I played first edition about ten times. And, um, yeah, we died. Uh, so, anyway. So this is a flip through. I have not played the second edition yet. There are some significant changes. Uh, they really did things to clean up combat. If you got into like a mass combat of five characters against like 50 zombies or however you want to look at it. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me again. The uh, first chapter is pretty much how to read the book. And it's actually a really important chapter. And we're going to go over some of this stuff. Uh, if, if I can find it all, uh, interview, uh, interview, yeah, intro to what is survival horror, who you are, which, that's important because you can actually play you in this game. They, uh, have a personality test you can take, and it will, uh, define you, and then you put your skills into a effect, like you might be a martial artist, but you might not... Uh, be a professional kickboxer. So they weigh that and they teach you how to weigh that when you make your character. Or you can just make a character up. It doesn't have to be you. Or you can play a pre-generated character. Now, one of the important things that's kind of changed since first edition is the dice. Uh, the dice are actually, you can you can buy dice, but there is there is technically a workaround on that if you want. Um, they're color-coded. So red is damage, white is depletion, uh, black is difficulty, and blue is your speed. And then you use different combinations of the dice to create your dice pool throughout the game. Uh, and then the next thing up is your character sheet, your, they call it your spew, which is your abilities, which is strength, perception, empathy, and willpower. Uh, then you have all your different skills here. You don't necessarily know all these skills, uh, but you do know a lot of them. And then there's a legend right here to teach you how to read your character sheet. Uh, hopefully in the next month or so, I'll, I'll have made enough characters to be able to do a character creation video. Um, and then, the, then they go over the second page with another legend. Uh, and you move into the cards. Now, I actually don't have the cards, and I don't remember them from the first game. So I, I'm not going to go in-depth with the cards, but mostly the, the cards are different... <clears throat> Uh, your your different characters, uh, so it's like, I guess they're calling your sheet your character card, or it's a simpler card. But they do have things like for formations now, and uh, for damage, like there's different like injury cards, and things of that nature. Uh, and most of the first two chapters are on how to use the book, and then create a character. Uh, now it is a gestalt system, uh, and they actually go over that, and I want to use their definition because... I thought Gestalt was something totally different before I played this, and I don't see it. I thought it was right here. Uh, but anyway, it is it is basically a percentile game, uh, and there's really three different ways to play uh, Outbreak Undead. Uh, there's 
I should say there's three different game modes. It's it's always a role playing game. You will always role play, uh, but the, there's different like levels of difficulty. And the first game mode is the simplest, and that's uh, I believe arcade. Uh, if it's not arcade, it's Weekend Warrior. I might I might have them backwards in my head. Uh, and as you, as you can see though, I mean there's a lot of pictures, a lot of images. A lot of pictures of the different dice, which, you, like I said, you can color code. You can get red D6s and stuff and put the different facings on them uh, if you need to. Um, and then now back to game modes. Uh, arcade seems to be the simplest from what I remember. Uh, and basically it's set up to get you going and playing in one sit down. So Gestalt, okay. So... Uh, here, there, here's all the information you need on Gestalt. It's page 54. Um, Gestalt, oh, the, it's an extra ability. See, the way I always used to look at Gestalt was you would max, like if you were in D&D, &D, to me a Gestalt system was uh, you would max out everything on uh, your character. Not necessarily your ability scores, but like let's say I was playing a rogue ranger Every level I would get a rogue and a ranger level. That's how we played Gestalt. So this was a little bit different to me. And what they do is... Uh, basically it's an additional stat that is the measure of character knowledge versus the player knowledge. Um, it's kind of a really cool mechanic. Uh, it took me a little bit of getting used to the first couple times I used it. But outside of that, it, it's pretty simple. Um, and then back to game modes, there's uh, Weekend Warrior, now skills in Chapter 3. Uh, skills are pretty straightforward. They're everyday skills. Uh, some, I mean, you're not going to find um, the skill of physicist in here, but uh, you have the ability to create the skill that reflects that type of career path or the skills because a physicist obviously has more than one skill uh, if, if you happen to be playing a physicist. Or, you know, somebody who has the ability to make the Tesla coil. Or Tesla coil guns, like in other games. Um, so now, Weekend Warriors, are the, the, the game mode Weekend Warrior, has a little bit more meat to it. Um, and I would say that it's got a little bit more story to it and things of that nature. But nothing, nothing drives... Outbreak Undead. So here's a, here's a whole bunch of your train skills. Uh, or actually, we'll go to basic skills first. These are all basic. Um, lie. Grapple's a basic skill? Huh. Interesting. Everybody knows how to wrestle. I like it. Uh, and then, then train skills, like I said, you've got bow, crossbow, calm other people down. And then on the next batch here, and I'll come back to game modes in a second, you've got your expert skills. And then craft, construction, engineer. Uh, so maybe, you know, that doesn't fit the type of construction worker you are. So there are rules in here. Like, oh, there are rules in here to break it down a little bit more. Same thing with, like, for the mark. This one's got martial arts. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so make sure you guys can read what I'm reading. Uh, but, again, still, you see the spiral in the book. It looks... It looks like it's a journal. I've really enjoyed that. I love the way the book is laid out. Uh, the first time I ever picked up an Outbreak Undead book, I thought it was a little fragmented because of that, but it really grew on me. Um, so, <clears throat> after Weekend Warrior game mode, we have the Survivalist game mode. And this is just full-on brutality. I mean, there is nothing more brutal than this. Uh, this is the, the level where... When you go ahead and you roll your dice, it's a true percentile base, uh, and your successes are measured by 10%. Your successes and fails are measured by differences of 10% from the base. Uh, so the greater the percentage is from your base number, the more you succeed or fail. Uh, and that is one of the things that makes the game so brutally terrible. Uh, now, in gameplay, there's a lot of different core mechanics. You can, in arcade mode, they, they have the, the skill checks the way you would do them. You break them down. They're a little bit different for each each game mode of play. Um, and they, they go over the dice pool for you, which is really nice and neat. And I'm going to come back back to some more character creation stuff here in a little bit. Um, but there you've got your skill check, uh, and then you've got the way the rounds work. It's... 
instant check, resolution intent, check phase, and resolution phase. Uh, but outside of that, there is a lot of uh, chances and opportunities within Outbreak Undead to roleplay. Uh, there's the different character statuses they go over. Uh, hit locations, they have a little hit chart, which I have always enjoyed. Uh, they've got special combat rules. Uh, but And then you get into things like advanced injury. Like I said, this is a brutal game. This is not a game where you can expect to live for long periods of time. Um, and then they have a chapter or a portion of the chapter on healing your injuries. Uh, what I want to do, they got you know they've thought about animals and how to ride them, uh, morale checks. Uh, they, they go over the formations that we talked about a little bit earlier. There's an equipment chapter and a portion of the book covers creating equipment. Now. They have on page 135, there is a small section here on, well, here's substituting equipment kits, uh, making checks without abilities, kits, or gear, and then how to construct your own kits, and so on. But one of the things I want to focus on is right from the get-go, very few games, is this it? Nope. Very few games give you the... Uh, Amount, so here's a whole list of melee weapons. The amount of a lot of equipment, um, information that they do on things like this. So one of the key points of this book, in my opinion, is the chapter on strongholds and safe houses, and it talks about the differences in their roles, uh, and then they go over a couple of different ones, and then after that. Uh, do, 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 do. You get into the appendixes, and you have different uh, types of paradigms that they have in the game. Um, you have different uh, sample characters. Ah. Uh, and there's a good bit of it. That was one of the things I wanted to do. Uh, now, one thing I didn't talk about with the sample strongholds is they're set up in such a way that they introduce uh, room for NPCs uh, they go over it like it could be used as an adventure or the amount of people it can hold now what I wanted to go over before is that you can use these pre-generated characters like Catherine uh, pre-fall what she did here and then here's the return and her current age and everything and all of her skills in a little bio picture uh, but it is a point by system um, and when you use the personality test you get 40 points plus your personality test and it kind of generates your skills and stuff uh, but outside of that <coughs> excuse me again uh, that's the book it's set up in a uh, journal fashion it's a solid system I do think the system's better upon my first read of it than the uh, first edition. I haven't played first edition in a couple years now, uh, but I'm really hoping to play this soon. My goal was to play for Halloween, uh, but my group is in a little bit of turmoil right now with work, uh, holiday season, um, and a couple guys moved. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you have questions about Out Outbreak Undead, let me know. I'll answer them to the my best of my ability. I'll post it in the comments. Talk to you later. Hey guys, meet the Nibbles, who's going to go down. <laughs> she just did, decided not to go down my back, so we'll do this for her so she's comfy. Uh, thanks for watching my video, and I appreciate it. Uh, please, please hit the like button uh, and, and share it if you, you know, know somebody who might be interested. And of course, there's always Twitter and the Facebook thingy, and soon I have a newsletter coming. That'll be down there or in the link below. And... My kitty cat loves that idea. Uh, so anyway, uh, there was one more thing. There was one more thing. Oh, yeah. Subscribe. Be a part of my community. Our community. Let's make it grow together. See you guys at a con somewhere or a local store. Or if I'm driving through the country, maybe a game club. I don't know. You're not going to go knock down my camera. Bye, guys.